Dr. Dre, he ain't somebody that is very keen to doing interviews. It seems like he's very a shy person when it comes to interviews. Well, recently, somehow, Kevin Hart got him to do an interview with him. It's his show called Heart to Heart on that Peacock streaming platform. And Dr. Dre revealed a lot of things during this interview. I haven't watched the full thing yet because I do not have the Peacock uh, subscription thing. So I'm probably going to get it just to watch the interview. But there's been a lot of highlights when it comes to this Dr. Dre interview. And some of them have been really cool. Like there was one that revealed that, you know, Dr. Dre never planned on being an artist that the DOC pushed him into releasing the chronic. So that was cool. But this one is the one that got my attention the most because it was just mind blowing to think of the possibility of what could have happened if it happened. So this is what I'm talking about. Dr. Dre, the, the article says this, Dr. Dre is arguably the greatest producer in hip hop history who could work with any artist he wants to, but he's now revealed that he previously turned down working with Prince and Michael Jackson. That is insane. Turning down two of the most legendary artists ever. Let me play the clip for you guys so you guys can hear it. And then uh, I want to talk about what the possibilities of this could have been. Because this is insane. Who did you have the opportunity to work with? He was like, no, nah, I didn't, that you regret and that you should have worked with. But I don't want to throw your story off. No, but yeah, that's, that's a good segue. Um, Prince, Michael Jackson. Uh, you bowed out from yeah, working with them? Yeah. Both of them? Yeah. You didn't work with both Prince and Michael Jackson? Yeah. Was it like a demo tape or something? No, nah, they just asked me to work with them, and I just, like, what the fuck am I going to do with them? What? Yeah, that happened. What? So that is crazy. The possibility of Dr. Dre potentially working with Prince and Michael Jackson. I'm, I'm surprised at the fact that Dr. Dre didn't take this opportunity, but I can also see why he didn't, because Dr. Dre is a very a perfectionist. He is... He is Literally, Rick Ross just recently said it, that he was working in the studio for two months on two words an artist said. So, you know, with that type of perfection, combining with Prince and Michael Jackson's perfection, because they, they to themselves are perfectionists, I don't think anything would have got done, man. I just don't, I can see why Dre didn't want to do it because, you know, at that level, also could have been intimidating for Dr. Dre because... You know, I'm sure this is probably in the 90s or in the 2000s because, you know, obviously it can't be past 2009 because Michael Jackson passed away by then and then Prince later on. But it probably was in the 90s. I'm almost willing to bet. So Dr. Dre was in his prime, you could say, in the 90s. Uh, you could say Michael Jackson was leaving his prime but still good. And Prince was kind of leaving his prime but still good. Um, I think it would have been incredible. There was an MTV radio interview that Dr. Dre did back in 2001 uh, and he revealed that he declined working with Michael Jackson's uh, comeback album, which was the Invincible album, which was the first album he had released in over a decade. So, you know, Dr. Dre producing that entire album would have been interesting, but I know some artists don't like to work with just one producer, and some artists don't like to work with a bunch of different ones. So, And I know some producers don't like to work with just one artist, so it's a tricky situation, but... Damn, man, I wish we would have got at least one song, something, out of the session. Now, would that song ever been released? According to Dr. Dre, probably not. I'm, I'm just, because Dr. Dre has so much music. Like, when this guy passes away, we are guaranteed, like, at least 15 posthumous albums. You think Tupac still, and there's a fucking rumors of Tupac having posthumous albums. So, Tupac recorded his ass off, but I can't imagine how much posthumous music Dr. Dre has. But that is a crazy, crazy story, man. The fact that... They never worked together. I felt like that's a missed opportunity. And even Kevin Hart was reacting crazy to it because, come on, man, legendary people, legendary artists, legendary producer. Um, yeah, who knows what could have happened. The biggest what if, one of the biggest what ifs in music. What would you expect out of a Dr. Dre, Prince, and Michael Jackson song? I, I would expect the next level, man. You got three geniuses. Now, Dr. Dre and Michael Jackson, I would like I would like for them to work separately. Obviously, Dr. Dre and Prince, Dr. Dre and Michael Jackson, that would have been crazy. Even, dude, even like Snoop Dogg with Michael Jackson or Eminem with Michael Jackson, even though Eminem was trolling Michael Jackson a lot in the early 2000s, uh, you know, those collaborations would have been interesting. If Dr. Dre would have been the producer and got Eminem and Michael Jackson in the studio together or Eminem and Snoop Dogg or, uh, not Eminem and Snoop Dogg, but Eminem and, uh, I mean, Snoop Dogg and Michael Jackson or Prince and Eminem or Prince and Snoop Dogg or, 
you know, anybody in the aftermath camp, that would have been crazy to, to hear. So that could have been a possibility too. So it didn't have to be just straight Dr. Dre. It could have been Dr. Dre, his artist, and, you know, Prince or Michael Jackson. But, you know, what, what would that sound like? What do you guys think? Would you guys even enjoy those collaborations? Would you expect those to be the highest of caliber? Because I think that's another thing too, is the pressure for Dr. Dre would have been insane. He's already, that's why he scrapped the whole detox thing. The pressure's insane. He he puts these high standards on himself and it, it kind of hinders himself. But then when it when the music finally does come out, it is, you know, the craziest thing ever. 